Hey guys, it's Dan with another Doomtown Reloaded video. I apologise for the delay, but as you can see, we now broadcast in glorious 1080p. Yes, I have got a new camera, and you'll be able to see with the cards, which is fantastic. Why the stupid get-up, I hear you ask. Actually, most of you who know me would probably not ask that, but never mind, moving on. This week, we'll do Gadget and Mad Scientist, specifically this chap, Quaterman, 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 or as I call him, Robocop. Uh, fantastic little dude. Uh, lots of guys building decks with this. Anders Colonel took a uh, tournament in Denmark uh, with a deck based around this little chap. I've also been playing with him. My deck's slightly different. I'm going to talk about my deck in a bit. I'm also going to go through um, cards he's immune to, really good interactions you've got with him, and other bits and pieces as well. So put him down there. So uh, without further ado, let's get on with this. Where we're going, we won't need clubs. Okay then, let's have a look at uh, Robo Dude. We'll start with the cards that he's immune to. Uh, lots of different effects that he can't be hit by. A uh, couple of interesting ones to start with. We've got Soul Blast and then to a lesser extent Arden Gilman. Similar effects, uh, pull against Grit to either send home booted or ace. Now, little robot guy is obviously immune to being sent home. However, he can be aced by these. Unfortunately, he can be aced by them fairly easily. He only has a Grit of four. Uh, so Arden only needs to pull a nine and uh, Huckster, uh, we'll assume a Huckster two. Uh, with Soul Blast, probably you're mainly going to see running around, apart from the odd Ivor or Smiling Tom, uh, only needs to pull an 8, uh, which should be a fairly easy job in a heavily stacked hex deck, because they're running 10s or above to try and get this off. So, immune to being sent home booted, not immune to being aced, but it's worthwhile knowing that that option is there, if there's some obscure low-value Soul Blast deck, using it simply to send people home, uh, or if there's a low-value Mad Science deck, just using that for a send home effect. So put those over there. Other things, again, quite conditional. Too much tension. Um, if your Quaterman gets uh, wanted, he can't be booted. Um, again, it's nice to know he can't be affected by it, but there's another card in 10, uh, which we have to worry about. And we'll get to that in a bit. I'm sure you know which one I'm on about. Then you've got Ulysses Marks. Again, send home effect. Uh, only really an issue if your little robot guy is in a saloon with Ulysses, which means he can't be sent out. It's not going to come up that often. But, you know, it's nice as another card he's not been affected by. After that, we have a variety of cards that flat out just don't affect him, uh, mainly because they're bullet reduction. So, uh, make him sweat, immune, bullet reduction. Tail between your legs, you still have to make your posse first, but he's immune to the bullet reduction. Uh, so, that's not too bad. Uh, Wendy, a uh, very strong law dog with a send home effect, completely immune to that. Leo, seeing a lot of play with the boots, immune. Coach Whip's an interesting one. In low ball, he can't be chosen to be booted. However, he can be killed in a shootout. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of coach whips being played in low ball at the moment to boot somebody out for the turn, so it's worthwhile. Uh, he's immune to that. Pin down again, he's immune to the reduction. However, he can have to be chosen as the uh, first casualty. Uh, that's quite annoying. Uh, most decks run around him uh, using him as their linchpin for their, their shootouts. But, you know, the bullet reduction not being able to affect him means he's got less chance of having to lose and be chosen. Then you've got things like uh, Corporeal Twist. It's bullets and value, so as it's all one spell, can't reduce bullets, which means you can't affect me at all, can't even cast it at me. Uh, so immune to that. Flowers this mark, immune. Blood Curse, same again, even though it's bullets and influence, because it's all one effect. Nope, not casting that at Quaterman. Sun in your eyes, sees a lot of play in a lot of decks. This is one of the coolest cards he's immune to, as well as Pistol Whip. Two, uh, two really strong cards that see a lot of play in a lot of decks and uh, key to a lot of uh, shootout-based uh, shenanigans. So that's always nice that he's going to hang around. And then the 10, that's uh, the big problem. So, unprepared. He can't have his bullets reduced by it. It's only minus one anyway. That's a small game. Unfortunately, even though he can't be booted, the, the way unprepared works is anything you've got attached to him will get booted and that will lose its bullet bonus. And since the only bonus he can get is from attached weapons, or attached goods, um, this is a big problem for him. Uh, the downside of this is unprepared sees a lot of play in almost every deck I see. Someone's running at least two of these. Um, two is not an issue. Uh, four is a problem, because they're going to have one at some point. It's going to hurt. Uh, my answer to that has been just basically two robots at them, and hope they haven't got two. Um, 
And then there's a card that he's not immune to, which you have to be aware exists, and I keep walking into it over and over and over again, and that's Shotgun. Uh, shotgun equals Dead Quaterman, uh, pretty much. Uh, Ramiro with it, anybody with three bullets with it, is killing your robot. There's no negotiation here about this, he's just dying. Uh, and that's quite a sad. But it's on three, so you're only going to see it probably in Sloan, maybe some law dogs. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And the thing is, it's an open card on the table, so you can see the shotgun. You know it's there. Uh, so if you're running your own pistol whips or other things you can do uh, to try and get around it, you shouldn't really walk into it. I keep doing it because I'm an idiot. However, it's very easy to play around and avoid if you can. So in total, there are 16 cards that in some way can't affect him. Uh, this is only going to get higher and uh, more useful as more cards get released. Um, but there's some really, really cool interactions there that he's basically immune to. Probably out of the 16, 6, maybe 7, see a lot of play in a lot of decks, especially all the hexes, because um, that's the top end of hexing, uh, which a lot of hex decks are doing at the moment. So he's a very, very resilient little chap, his our little robot, uh, and I like him. So I like him so much, I went out my way to build a deck around him. Uh, I went with a very unique approach, uh, which didn't quite work, um, but I'll get my cards together, I'll put the deck out, and I'll show you what I built and talk about my decisions as I go. So bear with me and I will go and get the stuff. Right then, so as we have the uh, new camera, which has a much wider view on the map, which is fantastic, I'm going to try something new with this deck build. Rather than get all the cards out to start with, I thought I'd just go straight from the folder and you'll see basically what I do when I build a deck as I do it, instead of me just getting a pile of cards and going, well, I chose this and then I chose this. You'll see me build it as we go. So, we've established it's a Quarterman deck. Uh, so, the first thing we're going to need is four of the little robot dude. He goes in the deck straight away, since that's what we're building around. Let's put him down there. So, he is a three-value difficulty five gadget, so he can pull himself assuming we start a Mad Scientist 2. Now, if we want to do that, we have to go Morgan. Uh, all the other Mad Scientists available to us are only ones. Uh, I'd love to have built this as a Law Dog deck, so I keep calling him Robocop, so it would be awesome to be able to run out the Law Dog's outfit, but unfortunately, not having that strong Mad Scientist start and that he can fail himself uh, with a pull kind of meant we had to go the other route. So I went straight to Morgan and immediately went for Kyle, because he's awesome. Uh, zero upkeep, dirt cheap guy. Yes, he's rubbish for everything else, except for inventing stuff. I don't care. He invents Quaterman, he pulls it himself, it's fine. No issues there at all. Nice, cheap guy. So obviously he's put us straight into Morgan. Let's get the home card out there. There we go. Um, backing up Kyle. So, having read uh, Art of the Robot Guy, uh, he has a very interesting line of text. He says his bullets can't be modified except by uh, goods that are attached to him, so weapons. So that was a fairly easy choice to go into next, find out which weapons we want to put with him, see how good we can make him. So into guns. We're in gadgets anyway, so we'll start with gadget guns. They tend to be slightly better. Uh, obvious choice that immediately sprang to mind was the Holy Wheel Gun, simply because it adds two bullets and it makes him stud three. Uh, which is not fantastic, but when you can't lower his bullets, he's like three studs, good to have. It's also difficulty five, which means pulling a robot will actually invent it with Kyle. Great. Awesome synergy. Brilliant. Bullet reduction for you, and if you've got an abomination, they have to be the first casualty. That hasn't proven to be overly useful. Um, if there's a Bobo, if there's an Ivor Hawley... But if there's an Ivor Hawley, there's probably going to be a Brute, and he's going to be the first casualty anyway. The minus one bullet is also good, and it, uh, it did prove to be quite useful and key to some shootouts when I was playing. Other decent gadget weapons is the ever-controversial auto-revolver. Now, I don't have a problem that the auto-revolver can be used when you're not in combat. I think the only issue with it is, mechanically, it makes sense. It doesn't say shootout. It doesn't say... Uh, action it didn't do anything it's got no bold text says i have to be there the only problem i see three people having with it is because it's a gun thematically it doesn't really make much sense but i don't have a problem with that i like what it does i like i can do it from outside a shootout and that was my next choice unfortunately difficulty seven so little robot fella is gonna fail it 
um, but we have only got four of them. At this point, I'm looking at fives or higher, just so I can always make all my other ones. I did, as I was on the page, immediately go for four flamethrowers. However, I'm going to put these to one side and explain why they came out shortly after I grabbed them. So that was the start of the deck. So 12 weapons, uh, all with varying degrees of awesomeness. You probably wouldn't put the auto revolver on Quaterman. Um, you'd probably go for the Holy Wheel Gun and a flamethrower, simply because flamethrower makes him potentially stud five, which is even better than stud three, obviously. Um, and, you know, it's also a flame is good to somebody else. There's a good combination of weapons there and things you can do. Now, going further into his bullets can be modified by goods that are attached. I had a brainwave in epic, mad science, genius moment. Um, I decided that an Alanda Baldwin would be a really good idea. Uh, it turned out to be hit and miss, um, but it was loads of fun to play. And the reason I went for Orlando is because he pulls. If he gets a club, uh, you discard the dude that you're, tar well, you're targeting at a gadget. So you target a gadget and pull. If you get a club, the guy who's got the gadget attached, the weapon, um, is discarded. If you don't pull a club, it gets plus three bullets. So all of a sudden, our little three stud holy wheel gun robo dude is now a six stud holy wheel gun robo dude or with a flamethrower a eight stud which you can't do anything about you can't send him home you can't turn him into a draw he's eight bullets of studly awesomeness and he's gonna shoot you in the face so Orlando went in uh, and then I went okay no clubs I can do this that's not a problem the issue here being that without clubs, there's really not much you can do about cheating. Uh, so at this point, the flamethrowers came out, and the replacement eight of hearts went straight in. And uh, that is the quick draw handgun, simply to give me some anti-cheating tech. Uh, I didn't want to keep running into people who, once they figured out after a low ball or two, I had no clubs in my deck, or very few, they could just chuck four and five of the kind at me. That would just prove too painful, even for a six stud guy to fend off. So they went in as well. And so at this point, we're in six, seven, eight. And I figured, we're going to be building a shooter deck. We've got a huge stud guy you can't send home. We'll go into that, and we'll, we'll flesh out six, seven, and eight. So adding in some dudes, an extra lander in case of a kidnapping. We want a replacement who's going to come out. Arden, while we're never going to get his ability to kill somebody off, 678 gives us up to 9 value to send somebody home, up to 9 grit, sorry, send somebody home. Sloan starts, Law Dog starts, all loads of really low grit dudes. His ability would actually be quite useful uh, for sending somebody home, which is quite nice. So he went in, and I gave us three sixes, and then my last six, um, I've started doing this in a lot of my decks, is to add in a Bobo, and I use him simply like Stephen Wiles. He's just as good uh, as Steve. He comes out for one cost. Uh, his ability is simply awesome. Um, bonus to bullets equal to highest huckster. So most games, you're probably not going to play him. If you do see a fourth ring starting Smiling Tom, he is a five stud guy for one cash for one turn. And if you have got good income, He's half the price to keep him played than Stephen Wiles is. Uh, so he's actually fantastic. I love him, and he's going in all my decks at the moment. Just one copy, because we're seeing a lot of fourth ring in the area. So that was sixes. Sevens, staying with fourth ring. Arla McAdish, he does cost you two, simply because he's got his high influence there to pay for every upkeep. But because all of our deck, apart from the other robots, could pull his ability... If we did get a draw and the robot had to die, we could just send him home, which was fantastic. You know, rather than discard the robot, send him home, keeps all his gear, lives to fight another day. So Arnold was a fantastic choice for seven. He's on value. Why not add him in? After that, trying to flesh out the Morgan side of things. James was a, a, a difficult choice to add. Um, if I'd still been running Flamethrower, he'd have been immediately gone in there. Uh, as it happened, I wanted different guys on value I could play and also use and shoot at hand, so he went in anyway. Um, if there was an alternative for him, he'd have gone in. And 
other than that, we have neutral, old Roderick Bayer, our uh, sadly deceased mayoral candidate. Replacement mad scientist, on value. Jobs are good. And then Andrew Cleese Brocklehurst, simply again, he's a useful seven who might see play. He's too influenced, he's worth dropping out. Uh, he'll keep you in the game for a while and he's got a fantastic money gain ability. Uh, played a game on Saturday and it was a Pancho Castillo. Uh, sat on one of my deeds and he was good for two cash a turn i must have made 10 12 cash off that guy uh, and he really helped the deck being able to replace guns and bring things out it's very very cool on to eights um eights were difficult honestly they really were um i honestly couldn't think what to put in so i went oh actually you know you know what eights is steve wilds isn't it really um i tried to think of something interesting and original to do and couldn't it just builds itself. You're in eights. You need eight guys who you can get back in your deck to use the shootouts really quickly. Why wouldn't you? Um, there's really no reason not to have these guys. So, that was the dudes. Uh, deeds. Deeds was fairly simple. Um, it was simply a case of finding deeds that matched what I was doing. I didn't go into um, heavy amounts of on-value stuff. Um, where are we? Six, seven, eight. We've established that we don't have clubs, so two on and D ranch seemed very obvious. Two cash turn and an out of town control point. I can use this with gay abandon. My opponent has to risk using it uh, or losing it um, if he wants to go for it. Um, I never had a guy there. If you send a guy out there, you sit on one control point. That's a guy you don't have in town square. Have a control point. I don't care. Uh, that was two of those. And then the other option was originally it was a killer bunnies and a stagecoach office and they seemed a good combination killer bunnies um extra discard so cycle through your deck faster try and find quatermans and stagecoach office when you invent him it lets you put him in play anywhere you control i went to two stagecoach officers in the end to try and draw one to try and use its ability to drop him out on opponent's deeds if i was there it didn't end up being that useful. I was generally wanting to put them at home, or, or only to the deed left or right of my home, uh, which are already adjacent. You can move there anyway. Um, so in the final build, um, I did use two of these. However, I would recommend keeping the bunnies to cycle your deck faster. Sevens, not many options in seven. Um, Blake Ranch, Cattle Market, and Hunter's Protections. Hunter's Protections, I would probably run one of now. I didn't. Um, but this is now an option for me simply because it says boot your dude um, so you can't use it with the robot however given how many dudes we've got if we need a control point in a hurry uh, and it's going to give us the game they're booted out we've got a steven in hand drop out steve get him here get him a control point not too bad at all it's worth zero no one's going to come and sit on it and if they do come and try and use it to get control points they're also getting bounty you kill their guy and you get some money then two blade crunches because three income is good, and the capital market, just to give us some variation, so we've got extra Ds to play if we draw into multiples of the same value, and also we've got enough ranchers that we'll get the control point off it as well. Eights with the same sort of process. We only have two eight of diamonds at the moment to play with, and that's Pat's Perch, so it was two of those, and the Circle M Ranch. So it was two of those. And there we go, that was the core of the deck. So it's 12 sixes, 12 eights, 12 sevens. So that's 36 cards. Uh, we've got a couple of starting dudes. Uh, the moment we've got a lander and a Kyle. So I went back to, now we've got a core of a deck idea, what we need to flesh it out with. So since we're building around seeing specific cards, uh, we want to see Quarterman early. We want to see a Holy Wheel gun as early as possible. Um, the obvious choice for Grifter, although Gina is amazing, um, I thought Travis would make the better option, so he went in. And then I also added a Jake Smiley for some extra influence, and that gave us a, a fairly solid start. Uh, so we have those two guys, Kyle and an Elanda. And that was pretty much the start for me. Um, two mad scientists, that was great. Um, so I can actually build a robot and a gun in turn one. Uh, between them, um, they are three influence. Um, and that's why I decided that although I already don't have a lot of cash, uh, you'll see that that's a, a 13 cash start down there. 
I needed more influence to be able to stay in the game. I couldn't risk a turn one kidnapping on, of all people, Jake Smiley uh, against a good opponent who's not going to care. When he sees you've only got that little influence, he's not going to kidnap Atlanta. He's not going to kidnap Carl. He's going to kidnap Jake because that's going to get rid of two influence in Sundown. Uh, so Irving had to make an appearance, as he generally always does in a Morgan start. So I ended up spending uh, an incredible 16 out of my 18 starting cash, uh, starting on two, probably losing low ball given how stacked my deck was. So I'm only starting on one cash pre-upkeep. But the cool thing about all these guys is they're all zero upkeep. So I'm getting all three of cash off my home. So I wasn't too concerned with the low start, especially because the highest cost deed is generally four. Uh, so I wasn't a major issue for me. And I wasn't really going to play these till late in the game anyway. I wanted to get a robot out. I wanted to get a gun out. And four cash is enough to do that. So if you win low ball, you're good. You don't. You've got four. That's fine. You can still afford to buy a robot and give him a gun. So that was a starting posse. And then beyond that, it was simply a case of adding stuff in to do things. Now, when I originally built it and I was playing around with stuff to do, I went for buffalo rifles. Um, Lander only works in the shootout. It has to be in there to give these extra bonus bullets to the robot. Uh, so uh, I put Buffalo Rifle in so I could join in from home, and that was all well and good. Um, it gave me a couple of options to get him involved. But after that, I was like, well, what do I do? I put four Buffalo Rifles in. I suppose if I had all four Quatermans out and I was running out of stuff to give them, I could give one of them a Buffalo Rifle. He could join in from somewhere else. All that really does is give me one stud. So I went for, if I'm only going to go for getting one stud, I might as well go for a Pearl Handle Revolver set instead, uh, simply because they'd be more useful on the starting guys. Pearl Handle Revolver on Travis suddenly turns him into quite a threat. Uh, a Buffalo Rifle on Quaterman does not. So we went to fives, and we put those in, and they rounded it out with a smattering of uh, five value deeds. And again, same process. It was simply whatever I liked the look of. Um, I can't actually remember what I ended up running, simply because they were just sent there as uh, cash generators. I think it ended up being two each of Pearlie's and Charlie's place. Pearlie's proved to be a problem because it cost five to put into play, um, and uh, it getting the way more often than not. So that was the core of the deck. Uh, I'll put a deck list in the comments below, uh, so you can have a look. It's, uh, it's a fun deck of, uh, of nonsense and gadgets to play with. Uh, not as high tier as some of the Quaterman decks that I've seen. Like I say, Anders took uh, a whole tournament with the Quaterman deck. Very, very good deck. Um, rather than going for the Alanda approach of getting as many bullets as possible, he ran all of the key action cards, Sunning Your Eyes, Coach Whips, uh, etc. Uh, simply because he could use his, you can't use yours. It gave him a phenomenal advantage, and it did definitely work out in his favour. Uh, if you want to give this a go, uh, please feel free. Uh, it's... I say it, it's hit and miss. Some games it will go off if you see a if you see Quatterman early, you see a, a wheel gun or uh, an auto revolver early. Um, it, it goes off. It's brilliant. It's park your robot in town square and call out anybody who comes anywhere near you. Be wary of unprepared. Uh, it's a scary card to face. Um, thankfully, it doesn't pop up as often as it you know you'd think it would. Even with four in the deck, they've still got to draw it. And once they've played it and they've played it, that's fine. Get the hell out of that shootout as fast as possible. Hopefully you've got a chump there to casualty. Get everybody else out. The unprepared's gone. If you get in another fight, it won't be there. But yeah, give it a go. Um, it's, a, it's, it's not the top tier mad science deck I was hoping it would be. However, uh, I had fun playing it. I won some games, lost some games. And uh, I, uh, I, thought, I thought I enjoyed it. Uh, next, I will probably do, um, I would imagine, um, probably some sort of build... Uh, around something else. I've been playing with a ghostly gun ace in the hole fetch deck recently. Uh, I've put that on DTDB. Uh, you've got to find that under my name, Wizwang, if you have a look for it. I played that recently as well. I should probably have a look at that. I've already done one fourth ring build, but this plays entirely differently to the other one. Uh, so I should probably do that one next. In the meantime, uh, please feel free to leave comments, ask questions, uh, or you know, build deck, go have fun. Let me know how you get on. See you next time.